Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. In our last episode, we talked a lot about the Freak Trade dashboard and how we can combine multiple Freak Trade instances and have them all displayed in a nice unified GUI, right? So, a lot of questions came up after that about hey, how exactly do I duplicate all these instances? in the, the freak trade Docker world. So I wanted to take you through that today. I think that's a really valuable lesson. And also there's a few tricks that I wanna show you about environment variables and how to get around some of the repetitiveness of having to change entry points each time you duplicate an instance. You can do that all in an environment variable and you can still do that as a Docker stack. You don't have to do it as a Docker compose. There's a trick to pass those environment variables through even in a Docker stack deploy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tear down all of this right here so that we can build it up fresh. No, yeah, it's easy. Docker makes it easy to do that. Okay, so if we hop over to our command line and terminal, uh, I wanna show you those running instances today as we see them. So if I just do a Docker stack ls, I'll see those running stacks, okay? And this is a little bit more cryptic, but if I do Docker PS, this will show you the actual running containers. And since each of these stacks is really just one container with a couple exceptions, um, they're almost the same. This is just a little harder to read, of course, but it gives you more pertinent information. Uh, the second thing you might notice is that I'm not in my usual office. I'm on the road this week. So uh, yes, um, I am in a hotel room and <laughs> I'm recording this as best I can. So I do hope that this comes out the way that I expect. But even being on the road, I wanted to make sure that I got this recorded and got this out for you guys. A little bit of background noise. I think they're working on the like floor below us or something. I don't know. You, we see those running instances. I wanna go ahead and remove them. So again, if we take a look at our stacks there, we see what all we have. I have a few that I wanna get rid of just so that I can redeploy them and show you how that process goes. So let's get rid of bot01 and 02. Docker stack remove bot001, gone. 02, gone. Now, if you're already familiar with containers, you know that I stopped those instances by destroying those stacks, but I didn't delete any of that persistent data, not yet. So let's just use those bot001 and 002 as our samples. And if I do go back into my freak trade dashboard, but 01 and 02 are red, they're down, right? We've destroyed them. So let's go ahead and just remove those from our dashboard. We don't need them right now. I'm gonna get rid of some of these other ones too, just so that what we're doing is clear. Even though they're still running in the background, I'm gonna leave them out of our dashboard for now so that what we're doing is very clear. Okay. So back over here, if I take a look at my file system, I still have my bot001 and 002 directories. Let's just remove bot002 entirely. And for bot001, let's go into that. I wanna show you how this is configured. So I think the best way to do this is to kind of have like a base configuration that you're, that's what you're always copying and then making those minor modifications to in order to do a quick redeploy. So that way it contains kind of a good fresh vanilla baseline that you can just copy, make your changes, deploy a new bot. So let's get rid of a couple things in here right away. So we know that our database, which is a SQLite database that lives in the user data folder. So I'm gonna remove that. I have it set as this trades.sqlite. So I'm gonna say remove trades.sqlite, gone. I also wanna clear out the logs. They're really not gonna be of any value transitioning into another bot with a different strategy or a different timeline. So logs and the logs path, there's freaktrade.log, go ahead and delete that. When freak trade starts up, if they don't exist, it's gonna create those fresh, which is what we want. And then everything else really is in our config file. So if we take a look at our config JSON, this is where when you come in to redeploy these bots, you're gonna make those changes between that and your strategy file, okay? So let's go back one path to the root. Let's take a look at what I've done with our Docker compose file. So this compose file is what tells Docker how to deploy freak trade with some of those parameters and you know what volumes to mount and things like that. Additionally, since we're also using traffic as our proxy to give us a nice unified 
namespace across all of our containers. We've got a bunch of configuration in here for that as well. So if I scroll down a little further, you'll see, I think they're remodeling the other floors. So as we go down to the labels section here, this is where we're passing the labels that traffic sees so that it builds out its proxies so that you can access these without having to remember IP addresses and obscure port numbers and things like that. However, there's a lot of repetitiveness in here. So what I've done, by the way, I've got all this sample code posted on my website, link directly below. Go ahead and click on that. You don't need to scramble to try to capture this during the video. After this video, just go ahead and hit that link, grab that sample code, make things really easy for you. So I wanna show you how these work. So as you can see, I have a few things in here, like where I'm referencing bot name, and look at the formatting on that when you download that sample code. So it's dollar and then curly bracket and then the variable name. So I'm just calling it bot name and then close it out with another curly bracket. You can reference these for just about everything in your Docker Compose file. So you'll see I have one for bot name because that needs to be unique. If we go up a little further, I also have our database file. Now for us, I'm always using the same database name, but breaking that off into a variable can be really handy later on. Strategy, now that's a big one too. We definitely are gonna be modifying our strategies across our different bots. So being able to just reference that as an environment variable makes things a lot easier. So knowing about those variables, we need to see where do we set those. That makes this file itself relatively static. We don't really need to come in here and change anything. Now, one thing, I just wanna point out one other thing though. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that if you've watched my other video on traffic and how to use that fully qualified namespace with a wildcard DNS entry, that's what you're seeing here. You probably don't want to use my FQDN here. It's not really going to do you any good. This is resolving inside my network. This is just a throwaway domain that I own. It's something easy that I can use. So if we so if we exit out of there, for those environment variables, there is a .env file. Now the dot means it's a hidden file. So that's why when you take a look at your user directory, you don't see it unless you use a special switch. So ls-lh. It's going to show you everything and you're going to see that .env file. Ah, now that's where we have our environment variable stashed. So let's edit that nano.env. And in here, you'll see I have those three environment variables that we referenced in our Docker compose file. So when you're copying this directory to deploy new bots, all you need to do is come in and modify this .env file. That way, when the bot deploys, it's going to reference these in that file. That way you don't forget to change something and it's also a lot faster. You don't need to go in and repetitively edit a bunch of lines. You just have these couple of things that you need to change. So bot name, the strategy file that we're using, that has to be the actual strategy file that's in your strategies folder. Make sure that that's correct. And then the database. So when I'm redeploying bot 001, this all looks good to me. So I'm gonna exit out of here. Now, here's the fun part. If you're pretty well versed in Docker, you're probably screaming at your screen right now saying, you can't use environment variables with Docker stack deploy. Yes, you can, there's a trick. <laughs> I'm gonna show you what that trick is right now. I really prefer to use Docker stack deploy whenever possible, but the baseline docs will tell you that you cannot pass environment variables in the same way that you would with a typical Docker compose deploy. You're gonna tell Docker to evaluate the environment variables first and then deploy it to Docker stack. So let's see that command. And here it is. Again, uh, all of this is listed on my website for your code samples and these commands. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and store this somewhere. I think this is gonna be a handy command. So Docker stack deploy dash C, which is the config file. We're gonna tell it to do something before. So what it's doing is it's going to then run inside of this Docker compose config, which is going to tell the Docker engine to read the Docker compose file and evaluate its config. And since it's Docker compose that's running those, it's going to grab those environment variables and then it's going to pass it back and deploy as a normal Docker stack, getting all your environment variables in a Docker stack. Boom, done, awesome. And then of course we have our name. There's one thing to be aware of. Since we're using this effectively as a Docker compose file, you need to make sure that your file version matches your Docker compose version, which typically is a lower version. I'm using version 3.3, seems to work well for me and fairly universal. I don't feel like I'm missing anything as far as configuration flags, but 
make sure you note that. So if you're using like 37, 38, 39, likely that's not gonna work because that's probably too high of a version for your Docker Compose as opposed to your Docker and your Docker stack. So they are a little different, but this lets you get the best of both worlds. Deploy things as a Docker stack, but still get environment variables. Awesome, let's deploy this, off it goes. It gives you a couple warnings because I do have configuration flags in there that are specific to Docker Swarm. So Docker Stack evaluates those and says, hey, uh, I don't, not gonna use these, but that's okay. When it then gets reevaluated by Docker Stack, all of those things are honored and away it goes. So this is deployed in the background. If I do Docker Stack LS, we'll see I have bot 001 running and we'll just give that a few minutes to deploy in the background. So while that's going, I wanna go ahead and deploy a second one just for fun. So let's do this. Let's go back one directory and I wanna copy that entire directory. So cp-r for recursive, bot 001 to bot 002. There we go, pretty quick. Take a look. Yep, we have a bot 002 folder. So let's go in there and we're going to do a little bit of similar cleanup. I'm gonna remove the database and the logs because they're not of any value. Go on, remove. Okay. And why don't we make a change? Because we want to, likely we're deploying parallel bots. They're not gonna use the exact same configuration. That's not really gonna do much for us. We wanna probably use a different strategy. Let's edit our environment file, that .env file. And we need to give it a different name. So this is gonna be bot002. And why don't I give it this other strategy? Superfreak02. Okay, same database file, doesn't matter. It's just gonna create a new one. And it's in a separate directory, so they won't conflict. I'm gonna save that, exit out. And let's deploy this one as well, same command, except that, of course, I wanna change the stack name to bot002 at the end of that file. Other than that, that's it. Off and running. Same warnings, it's okay. We give that a moment. And if we do docker stack ls, we'll see I now have bot001 and bot002. Awesome, okay. So let's go check in on those. I wanna take you through a couple troubleshooting things here, just because you do this enough, you're certainly gonna run into problems. I wanna show you how to chase some of those things down. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into Portainer. I presume you have Portainer deployed as part of this. If you haven't, again, go back and watch my video on how to deploy traffic, because we covered it there too get into your portainer. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna take a look at my stacks. I'm gonna see the same stacks that I saw on the command line. And I wanna take a look at say bot001. I see it's running, it's replicated. That's a good, usually a good sign. And if I hit this logs icon here, this will show us the real time logs. You can also pull these from command line. This is an easy way to do it through the GUI. So it's doing a lot of stuff and we saw it evaluated our trade pairs and all that, but that last state that says state equals running, that's a good sign. So that tells me the container's up and running, freak trade is healthy. Let's see if it properly built out that name in traffic. So if I pop into traffic, go to the HTTP tab, and I take a look at what it is mapping, I see a bunch of things, but importantly, I see bot001 and 002, great. So that means our labels properly worked from our environment variable tags, it passed through and it plumbed it all through into traffic. So now I should be able to hit that. And to further evaluate that, let's take a look at the bot directly. Before we go to add it into our dashboard, let's just make sure we can see it. So that would be bot001 and the fully qualified name that you have built out in your environment. And for me, perfect. It lands at the landing page of that bot. Terrific. Okay, so let's back out of all this and let's go to the real deal. And we're going back to our dashboard here. As you remember before, I cleaned everything out except for our kind of our baseline, our just our freak trade namespace, the one I'm using for my dashboard. Let's add a new bot. I'm going to give it the name of that bot 001. And as we talked about in the previous video, you know, I kind of have a particular naming format that I like. So I'm going to build on that a little bit. I'm going to add the name of the bot itself. So bot 001. Now I know what I'm looking for. And then I'm gonna give it the strategy file name. So that one was super freak one. 
I'm gonna give it the currency. I happen to know that that was in USD and whether it's dry run or live. So dry run and then the API URL, this is going to be bot01 and the rest of that fully qualified name. And then again, the API username and password that you have in your config.json file. Okay, perfect. It shows up. And if I hit the refresh button here, it turns green. That's what I expect. Let's add in the second one since we're at it. Bot002. Super free. 02, also USD. And it is dry run. Okay. Same thing, bot002, and then the rest of that fully qualified name, API username and password. In it goes, a refresh, it's green. And if I go to dashboard, now there's it's not really doing much yet, it just started up, but it does show up here in the dashboard and giving it a little bit of time, it will start to populate some trades as it continues to run through those. Awesome, so that's how we rapidly deploy multiple bots and you can just repeat this process as many times as you want. A couple caveats to this I want to make sure you guys know about. So all of the crypto exchanges are going to have API throttling limits on them. So depending on where you're at in the world and which exchanges you're using, even in dry run, you're still querying those APIs. You can't just load this up with dozens and dozens of bots all on the same exchange and expect it to not start to throttle you. So take a look at the free trade settings. There are options for doing your own throttling so that you can kind of make enough slices to make it fair for all of your bots if you have to use the same exchange. The other way around that is if you're doing, again, these are dry run, right? So you don't really care what API it's using as long as it's pulling good data. You can also spread this out and use different exchanges so that you can have a bunch of bots running and maybe some of them are using Binance, some of them are using Kraken. That way they're hitting these different API endpoints and still pulling that data in. The data is gonna be largely the same coming from different providers. So just keep that in mind. If you start to see weird errors in your logs about throttling or things like that, you've probably got too many bots on one particular exchange. So that's it for today, guys. If you're not already, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And if you have questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. As, as you probably know, I do respond to those. So if you have questions, if there's other video topics you'd like to see around this, clarifications, whether it's free trade, whether it's Docker or anything in this space, I'm more than happy to share that knowledge with you and help you improve your skills and have some fun along the way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.